Welcome back. As we left off, I was sitting in place harvesting some elven wood, so none of you miss much. An unexpected visitor, Theodore, arrives at your village. Your food stocks have grown. Your people are learning how to live in the awakened fear once more. But the darkness is not gone. Always looming in the shadows, lurking behind corners. It is time to try and find clues as to what happened and how to repair it. Ah, that's the spirit. I knew we could count on you. I must warn you, others have tried and failed before you, so the road will not be easy. I know some, but I do not hold the answers you need to seek. I know that once Thea was a land ruled by high magic. A land where demons were kept in check by the peoples and by the cosmic balance upheld by the gods. The pillars of Thea stood sturdy and held our world together. Now the barriers between the lands of the living and those of the dead are torn asunder. And thus darkness holds a tight grip on us. Without your raid, whatever made the sun return may not hold for long, and the age of darkness may descend upon us once again. There have been those who sought to undo this curse, those who were charged with the guardianship of Thea's pillars, and who have failed us. Some were the ancient peoples you call elves, some were avatars of your gods, and some just people who proved worthy. And yet they all failed thus far. Here on this map, I marked a spot where one such guardian may hold answers for you. Without giving you a chance to say anything more, Theodore disappears, leaving you with a map. I'm only up to 24 elven wood. And I need 50 for the herbalist hut. More sitting around, I suppose. Today was a good harvest day, and some of the village folk even managed to brew some Samogon, a strong spirit not for the weak-hearted. Another night falls over Thea, and restless so Thanks to the Lapiduch, your people sleep well this night, and many feel the magical touch of Veles upon them. Huh, well, isn't this fortunate? A hex challenge while I have the people under the effects of a magic buff. If there was ever a time to try to pull this off, it's now. Well, it seems that of the three guys that got the buff, only one was in the town. That's going to make this fight pretty tough. I need to use my other members to absorb all the damage so my lone attacker can get through both targets. Thankfully, this isn't a direct fight, so all damage taken will be erased at the end of combat.
my attacker is on the support line now, that's no good. Only going to be able to do a single point of lasting damage, given its shield. Alright, one down, and my attacker is back row again. And again, this is moderately annoying. But, thankfully, my one damage ticks have won the day. A Child Wraith. The whole no equipment thing isn't ideal, but that high leech and huge poison ratings make this guy a huge combat asset, and he also comes with six magic, which will let him solo almost any hex challenge up to three skulls. This is a very fortuitous result. A magic buff at just the right time to score a significant mid-game powerhouse. I'm not normally this lucky, but you know what they say, even a broken squirrel finds a nut twice a day. Or however that goes. That wraith is definitely coming with my main team on exploratory duty. And let's get the wood into town and start building that herbalist hut. There's a source of wicker out here, so I now know the way to make as many upper mid-tier gathering tools as I could possibly want. But what do I do with my team? It's about to be night again, so exploring is rather ineffective. Yeah, I think I'll go for that wicker. Outfitting my entire team with gathering tools, minus the crafters of course, will speed up my economy significantly. I already get vegetables in town, so I'll make the secondary gathering focus the shrooms.
Sophia is not an easy place to grow up in, but alas, grow up we must. One of your children has matured into a becoming an adult is an important... Two child events almost back to back. Sadly, I don't have the herbalist hut up yet, so I had to choose from the base three classes. Strength on the sage to carry more is always welcome, and a gatherer got gathering. And the new gatherer got gathering. I like this level. That new gatherer also has a pretty high strength rating. I can drop heavy armor on him. Well, my town has a tank now. A black cat is spotted rummaging through the barn. When it is caught, it runs off, but it seems to want you to follow it. Black cats are most commonly the familiars of witches, but there are several house demons, or protective demons, who can take up this form, like a doler, who is a guardian spirit, or a tresher, who can protect your farm's threshing and bring good fortune. You followed the cat outside, and it leads you into a patch of brambles where you are ambushed by a witch. Luckily, you see she is very old and crooked, and it will be easy to run away. Nope. Thea is not an easy place to grow up in, but alas, grow up we must. One of your children has becoming an adult is an important... Another growth event? Dang it, kids these days. More gathering it is. Well done. You have your very first buildings. As you can see, it takes many resources to build a decent abode. Or perhaps your god gifted you, in which case you cheated. Remember, the better the minerals you use, the better the bonuses from your buildings. You have a limit of 10 buildings, but you can demolish the old ones to make way for new. One of the ways to win over the darkness is for you to research more recipes grow your population and build more houses. So get going. Herbalist hut's done. At least my last kid will get to become a guaranteed medic. But that will still be the end of my children and there's going to be six other humans I want. Two more medics, two more hunters, and two more sages. I'll need to get the child generating cabbage field up soon. It's almost daytime, and my main party just finished gathering their two bundles of wicker. I'll drop the 14 pieces off at town to get the next batch of good level gathering tools going. Sure, let's try to help the guy. I won the last three skull physical challenge, and my warrior got three points of strength since then. Also, I have a ghost.
Seven mushrooms. The three XP is nice, though. As you make your way through the terrain, your herbalist spots an area where you can harvest some good herbs. They grow inside a hollow tree, but beware, there seems to be a lot of spider webs surrounding the place. These webs look thicker than I like. We best be quick about our business here, exclaims one of your men. Your herbalist carefully picks the right herbs, while the rest of the men keep a wary eye out for trouble. You already picked some of the herbs, but you notice that there is a larger patch further down the path. However, that area has a sticky white blanket of webs thrown all over it. I know this event to be a two skull fight with a good chance at decent resources. Let's do it. Your party sneaks up on the spider nest. The area is thick with spider webs and there is a stench of decomposing meat in the air. It is hard to make out exactly how many giant spiders huddle in the nest but the party is faced with a pit full of hairy, round spider bodies, an array of long twisted legs, and tens of red eyes glowing right at them. Leaving the beasts no time to rally, the team strikes. That spider queen hurts, and in this fight is all but guaranteed to be the first card played, but her seven cohorts are pathetic. I just need to deal with her before she nails me, and the rest of the fight is a cakewalk. My Wraith can one-shot her, so I think my plan will be to play the Wraith, then first action them to the front. Everyone else will just fill in the gaps to smack the weenie spiders around. Okay, here I am getting lucky again. That mini spider just tried to play counter offense, and at a skill of three, it would have been a guaranteed knockout of my ghost, had I literally not just moved it onto the field. That said, now that the enemy is out of tactical plays, I'll swap my strategy. I'll leave the wraith where it is to take damage and leech itself back to full, and have Blauslav here take the first action spot instead, since he can also one-shot the queen. After a tough fight, you finally clear the area of those nasty spiders. Within their lair, you discover some more herbs as well as bodies of fallen men and women who are clearly not as lucky as you. You search the area for any usable loot. Mid-tier gathering jewelry, 22 monster bones, and 12 dragon bones. I like it. I'll swap one guy with my town. Both Burb and Sorty can now sit in town and craft from now on.
And since that's going to be Sorty's permanent job, let's also swap his gear so that he can use that crafting tool. Oh hey, Nimblewood, the Tier 3 straw is right here. Used for both the best possible gathering tools, as well as part of the Blessed Paths. Two points of range damage on a warrior. I guess he learned how to shoot force bolts or something. Gathering on the Gatherer again, and Faint? Sure. The Nimblewood would be nice, but right now it's getting to daylight again. So after a bit of gathering tool rearrangement, it's time to move my main group out to explore some more. Those two ghosts had a half-decent spear on them. I could certainly use another guy with first strike. Top tier lumber is here, that's good to know.
Sophia is not an easy place to grow up in, but alas, grow up we must. Becoming an adult is an important rite of passage. Ah, the and here's a medic. Excellent. Of course, that means I am now totally out of children. Can't really put it off any longer. I need this cabbage field. Luckily, I have just enough granite to make one, and granite will get me up to a rating of 5. So, about 2.5% chance of a new kid per turn. You see a man in worn-out armor with insignia unknown to these lands. He is standing by a rock, clearly deep in thought, as he does not see you approach. When you look closer, you see he is looking at a sword half embedded in the rock. The man jumps up, startled by your voice. He grabs the hilt of his sword, but does not draw it. He takes a few steps back and speaks. How dare you disturb a king's moment of peace. I mean, I'm sorry, old habits. I am no king, not anymore. But you, my friends, look like, well, potentially, that is, I mean, you could maybe be called knights, right? My name is Arathor. I have traveled here from afar in the west, led by an ancient quest from my forefathers. I was led to believe that this sword will help me rebuild my kingdom and save us from the darkness. Alas, I have lost all of my knights just getting here. And now, now that I am faced with the sword, those blasted demons... They have cursed me with weakness, and I am unable to fulfill my destiny. The sword is my test, my burden, and my fate. It will not serve any other. My time is running out. I must return to my kingdom soon, or all shall be lost. Now, the sword is for me to claim, but as king, I can appoint you my knights, and you could claim it in my stead. The magic binding the weapon in stone will permit it, I think. Will you become my knights? Knights? Oh, well, a knight is a brave warrior, sworn to serve their king and god to uphold the law. It is a man who is righteous and honorable. Now I solemnly swear I will release you from my service once the deed I ask is done, and I hold the sword in my hand. Will you accept? Wonderful. I knew fate would provide my salvation. I did not know if your hearts were pure enough, but your agreement to serve my purpose, with no promise of a reward, proves that you are indeed the ones I seek. Now, by the power of a rightfully anointed King of Camroth, I pronounce you Knights of Camroth, and I command you to take the sword for me. Yep, King Arathor of Camroth. I'll help the guy out. But as this guide is only a semi-spoiler, I won't complete his quest. Not on camera anyway. You work together and pull out the sword from the stone. It looks like an ordinary weapon, except that it seems undamaged from its unusual sheath. When you hold it in your hands, however, you feel a surge of strange power coursing through your veins, and it feels really good. The king drops down on one knee as he accepts the sword from you. He speaks, and his voice becomes more forceful and clear than before. Well done, my knights. You have passed the test of loyalty and purity of soul, for this sword is known to lead its keepers astray. 
An ancient bloodline runs in my veins, one that has, in the past, both failed and succeeded in this very test. It has always been my fate to hold this blade and see what I am made of. And since I do not heed the urge to cleave you where you stand, I am hopeful that I too have passed. I release you from your oaths, Knights of Camroth. May the fates bring you strength and prosperity. I also give you this map. It will lead you to a bridge where you will be tasked with a test, and if you pass, a treasure will reveal itself to you. I meant to find it myself, but it seems fate had other plans. So go forth and seek it out. I will now travel back to my lands, and using the sword, I will try to reclaim my kingdom and restore the Eternal Tower to ward off the darkness. I wish I could tell you more, but it seems other lands are in peril, and it is a knight's duty to protect and defend. Alas, I am also a king, and I must first right the wrongs of my own people. I feel a great destiny within you, and I hope you will succeed in your own quest one day. Farewell. The king bows to you and holds up the sword. A light shines down from the skies, and he disappears. Three turns to twilight. You soon realize it is the touch of Lady Larda that keeps nightmares at bay and sustains your happiness. But one element keeps recurring every single night. An old, ruined building filled with sorrow and lost souls. You feel a strong urge to seek it out and you know where to look. The air around you grows stale and a black cat crosses your path. Black cats are known associates of witches or worse. But then again, several well-meaning spirits take such form, so this could go either way, really. You continue your journey in hopes it was just a cat. As soon as you cross the line where the cat has run, you feel a blessing upon your group. The cat must have been a dola, a friendly guardian demon. A black cat gave me a blessing, and earlier, me trying to respect the dead got me into a fight with wraiths. Just in case anyone thinks this game has a neat, tidy, do the right thing and karma rewards you system.
Let me try to convert the rest of my meat into better foodstuffs before I end up eating it raw. How about this recipe for Biggis? Yes, I know how it's actually pronounced. But my mother, of all things, called me up to complain about my pronunciation of brooch in an earlier episode, and now I'm salty as a plate of Biggis. You stumble across some ruins of an old. You search the ab You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. Your scouts report something of interest nearby and mark it on your maps. They have spotted an abandoned settlement made out of several thatch cottages. You could salvage much straw and maybe even some stone from the houses. Beware though, the scouts also report that a nest of giant spiders has taken residence. Sixteen steel. Nice. I think I'm going to grab another batch of elven wood during the night. Well, Amber is way out there. How about the next gem up, Malachite? Eh, closer. My indecisiveness is showing a bit here. Thank you. 
Your people have discovered tracks of some game. They lead deeper into the land, so only those who know their trade should follow, lest they spook the prey. Your hunters return, bearing the fruits of their labor. You will eat well tonight. You find the thatched cottages, and just as your scout said, the little settlement is long abandoned. Instead of people, a nest of giant spiders has taken residence there. You spot an intricate system of spider webs spread throughout this area. You plan a diversion to draw out the main body of the spiders. A small team can sneak in and steal as much as they can before the nest realizes anything. Or you can attack the small group of spiders left. Well, that's a new graphical glitch. Cars aren't supposed to dance like that. You have defeated the spiders. You find many good building materials from the cottages, and a good amount of fresh spider silk as well. Nice jewelry, 12 wicker, and an okay light armor piece. Thanks, spiders. Two different gatherers got gathering. Tactics for a warrior. Another gatherer with gathering. Yeah, that was a good level.
As you make your way through the terrain, your herbalist spots an area where you can harvest some good herb. Your herbalist can your party. Another spider barely fails at counter offense, although this specific fight is just getting easier and easier. After a tough fight, you finally clear the area of those nasty spiders. Within their lair, you discover some more herbs as well as bodies of fallen men and women who are clearly not as lucky as you. Decent jewelry, nice medium armor, and 20 scaled leather. I should consider making a few pieces of mid-tier gear at this point. As you approach the place shown by the dwarf, you see a girl sitting on a large rock, frantically looking out into the distance. When she sees you, she runs over without a second thought for her own safety, and speaks with a voice so soft and melodic, you cannot help but listen. You, you look, well, I guess you look like, hmm, you can handle some ruffians, right? A dwarven smith. Oh, Bodan, him. But why are you bothering me with him? I have a real emergency on my hands. I had four children, my nieces, yes. I was going to take them home, and I was set upon by a band of orcs. They took the poor little ones. Oh, what will I do now? I was on my way home. It's not too far from here, and we thought we were safe. Now there is no time to chat. We must find them now, and I would help, only I am so weak. These orc brutes have surely harmed my little ones. Oh, please help. Go out with the dwarf. What are you talking about? There are children at stake here. Yes, yes, I will do as you say. You must go now. I will mark on your map where I last saw them. Hurry. You stumble across some ruins. You search the ab You search the buildings and discover a supplies store still intact. So I think that's enough for an introduction to the game. I don't think I spoiled any of the major quests, though knowing that the Zeity and Herbalist are things that happen is something that everyone who plays should be aware of. As far as my progress, I need to ask this question. How am I doing? The answer is I'm doing all right. On the plus side, I suffered no deaths. I have my first medic, and the Elvenwood-based Herbalist Hut to guarantee my next two kids can be as well. I just got up a cabbage patch to make sure I have those kids coming. My town will end up having some very nice harvesting options as soon as I get up a Blessed Paths, and that Child Wraith character, despite being unable to equip gear, is a monster of an early game combatant who will be able to give me a leg up in any direct fights for a hundred turns to come. On the downside, I'm 80 turns into the game, and while I have a lot of decent things going, it took me perhaps a bit too long to get here. Harvesting the elven wood for the herbalist hut took me a lot of turns where my main adventuring group wasn't doing anything else, and I'm not very far along in the tech tree, which is a problem since I need to really build a lot more gear to get more research points to build more gear and harvest more materials, but a lack of research points and decent building materials at this very moment is hamstringing me. And a lot of my kids grew up before I got any advanced buildings, resulting in them becoming gatherers, and not even with the 10 point boost from having a manger. Basically, I'm set up well with lots of mid game and late game potential, but I'm struggling to get out of the early game to make it there. If I hadn't chosen Snail as my world progression speed, I might very well be running into encounters with painful levels of difficulty for where I am. What could I have done differently? 
I think the biggest mistake I made was to get the elven wood before building the herbalist hut. Don't get me wrong, an elven wood herbalist hut is great to have in the early game, but what I should have done was get up a bunch of child training buildings with basic wood just so that I could have them, and either not taken all those turns harvesting elven wood, or if I did, used it in town to make a bunch of gear instead. Say, either one-handed swords or spears, which would have been great for both my research points and to improve a lot of that starting gear I'm still walking around with. Someone who's played Thea before is probably yelling at the screen about spears and the Darkwood node that's really close to my town, but I'm kind of saving that for the upcoming strategy tips video. In any event, that's it for the sample introductory playthrough. There are going to be two or three more videos coming up, hopefully somewhat shorter than these last two, where I go over a few beginner and intermediate strategy tips. I already know some of them are going to be hard to get good footage for, so they may not come out every Monday, but they are coming. Stay tuned.